Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. It's winter, and a lot of people have tons of birds in their backyard right now because of the high stress with the cold and the, the, the snowy conditions that are covering food and things like that. But there are also people who are calling in saying, where are all my birds? What, I, I don't understand it. I, I, you know, I thought they'd be all over my yard by now, but they're not here. So I get this question every year for sure. And, and going into winter, uh, they would never you know, expect your birds to return to your yard. And there are different reasons this can happen. And I, I know every person's situation is different in different parts of the country and different uh, habitats, things like that. But I'm going to give you general reasons that affect uh, maybe the late return or absence of birds in your backyard at times. But I feel pretty confident that, you know, you can make some changes or not even make changes and they'll be there eventually uh, the winter. So what's up, number one? The first thing I always ask people, especially those people that are talk about, oh, I usually have had them for years, et cetera. The first thing I ask them, has there been any uh, construction or destruction near your house? Did they clear land for a new housing development pretty close to you? Or did a neighbor cut down a, a, a bunch of trees in his yard? Or it, 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 Because habitat is so important. Whenever you alter that, and you're altering nesting habitat, you're altering a feeding habitat, uh, it, birds will shift because of that. They will abandon an area. Eventually, they'll settle back in. But right after, you know, fresh habitat destruction near you, that can really affect the number of birds that are coming to your yard. And I think that's the first thing you have to look at, look at the big picture. And it might not be right in your backyard, but it may be very close that they cleared a bunch of land like this for a new housing development or a new shopping center or a new school, whatever. Um, but that can definitely be a, a leading cause. And of course, the opposite of that effect is... The, the amount of natural food that you're competing against. Uh, if you had a really wet summer and native plants did really well and you had lots and lots of uh, seeds and, and berries and things like that, then they, it, most people don't think about just grasses. I mean, these are prairie drop seed and little boost stem grasses, but all of those grasses produce seed, little, little tiny seeds, and, and especially the ground feeding birds and the uh, native sparrows. And, and a lot of birds love this. Plus, it's safer, you know, when they're out there and, and with lots of hiding places and collecting natural food and a diverse diet. That and, and you may be in a situation where the natural food in your area did very, very well and they're taking advantage of it. Uh, and once freezing and thawing starts, which Usually by early December, that seed's you know, dropping down and starting to run low, and then the birds will come back into your yard. Also, your acorn crop. Again, depends on your conditions, where you are, whether you had a good, strong acorn crop or you had a limited acorn crop, because that certainly affects a lot of species, and they will gravitate to areas with good acorn crops, blue jays, tufted titmice, you know, nuthatches, a lot of birds that are uh, associated with oak trees and acorns. They will, and so if you're your area, you lost a big oak tree in your yard or your neighbor cut down some, you know, it, things like that can affect the number of birds coming to your yard and it can take a while to gain them back. Uh, and then of course, is your yard really, really open? Uh, it, it, if it is and the birds feel vulnerable in it, uh, they they don't feel safe coming to your feeders or your, your bird bath because the, it's too open. And then we're going to talk about building brush piles to help them. And of course, landscaping over time will change. So if you're a, you're a new yard, it may take a couple, three years before you get trees or shrub, shrubs enough big enough to make those birds feel safe and, and come to your feeders more regularly. So again, an open yard can be very, a big turnoff to birds. And I always talk about water and the availability of water. If you live a long ways from natural sources of water, and remember, natural sources of water freeze up really quickly at this time of year. And of course, the birds have no access to it. But birds even have to bathe in winter. They not only do they need to drink, but they also need to bathe. And so a good bird bath it will be a huge help. But again, if, they, if this out in the wide open, they, they may be turning their noses up at it because they much prefer 
uh, there to be uh, cover close by for them to escape in. In my yard, this is on my deck, all my trees are behind the bird, <laughs> behind the camera. So they, you can see the reflection in the window there to the left. But uh, water is such a crucial part, of, and they have to have water. They, well, even when they're finding natural seed, if water is scarce, uh, that, that can be a big turnoff. And also remember, we talk about your neighbors stealing your birds. If they're offering up a source of water and you're not, then the birds will gravitate toward their, their yard. And the other incidence of that is if you're feeding low quality bird seed like this, which is filled with cracked corn and millet and milo, that red grain sorghum there, and a few sunflower in it, the nutritional value is so low in that bag of bird seed and the birds are, will, will eat it. A lot of birds, will, especially the ground feeding birds, will eat, but they're not getting a, 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 the nutritional value they need to keep them alive. The, whereas just simple black oil sunflower, and we have lots of great uh, seed mixes. Remember, seed eaters and grain eaters. So the seed eaters, uh, black oil sunflower, uh, safflower, peanuts, those are the high quality foods that really help fuel birds in these really cold temperatures. They convert to energy very quickly. And the other, another one that that just may be timing. Uh, if you're you're not seeing Oh, you know, the, the white-throated sparrows, American tree sparrows, some of these birds you're used to seeing, their movement is dictated a lot by what's going on in the north. Now, juncos make that journey down uh, every year, and, and, and they're usually in, like, clockwork timing-wise because they know their whole world is going to get covered up with snow in the north. Other birds, uh, some of these native sparrows, don't move down that dramatically they gradually move south as the winter progresses. And so it may be just a late year of some of the birds you're not seeing in your yard, white-throated sparrows, white-crowned sparrows, Harris sparrows, song sparrows. Some of those are may still yet to become. A lot of them don't get here really until December or even late December. So they, that could be the case as well. And make sure you good to have, have good escape cover for them. They love brush piles. They love low shrubs. And they, are, are, they, they will reward you. Um, and then one that's a whole lot less common, but it gets a lot of blame, is uh, a predator. Now, uh, if you do have regularly your free roaming cats, that is a major uh, uh, danger for your birds, and they, they kill billions of songbirds every year. So, protecting your birds from from uh, predators, hawks on the are, are, are a predator, and yes, the birds will leave your yard whenever, like this Cooper hawk comes through, flying through, if it maybe catches a morning dove or a bird every once in a while. But birds have evolved with those guys, and so they know that they're not going to be there constantly, and so usually they flush them out, and then they come they come back to the feeders pretty quickly, and they may be a little more leery, but they. they a bird like a Cooper's hawk or a shark shin hawk or northern goshawk, uh, they're not going to be the reason why you don't have birds at your feeders for long periods of time because they, the birds wouldn't know how to avoid them, especially if you have escape cover for them. So, you know, my rule, food, water, and shelter, uh, make sure you provide all that. And be aware of just habitat destruction near you because that is a very major problem for birds. So... Hopefully, you know, this sets your mind at least a little bit about why the birds are not in your backyard just yet. I really feel confident that they will get you, find you eventually. It may just take a little longer this winter. We see it happen, and, it, it, and it's, it's something that I know is disturbing because you want to see your birds, but uh, yeah, patience is key here. So if you like the program, please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Send in ideas for future programs. Until next time, let's talk birds.